Amendment 97ZA, Lord Blencathra. My new amendment, number 97ZA. My original amendment at committee stage was unbalanced. I accept that. I sought to protect female offenders, but neglected to account for the small minority of trans women who might face unacceptable risk if housed in male prisons. My new amendment aims to afford appropriate protection to all prisoners, notwithstanding that there can be no guarantee that every prisoner will be entirely protected from risk, even within their own single-sex units. Now, I do wish to thank my noble friend, the Lord Wolfson, for our meetings, for the teaching he organised, and for our ongoing discussions. Now, Your Lordships may ask, why have I brought back an amendment? Because this is an important issue in its own right. The needs of women in prison matter, and these needs mandate single-sex provision. Women in prison are acknowledged to be an exceptionally vulnerable group and cannot simply choose to use a different space which remains single sex. Now, these re reasons were discussed in the previous debate and I shall not repeat them. But this is also representative of the wider issue, my lords, that of the ability of legislation to maintain single sex spaces for women. The female estate is a definitive example of a space that should be single sex. If women in prison cannot be guaranteed single-sex spaces, then no woman or girl can. Hospital wards, changing rooms, rape crisis centre, refugees, toilets and schools, anywhere where women and girls, for reason of dignity, privacy and safety, require single-sex spaces. And I simply say this to my noble friend. If legislation is insufficient at the moment to secure single-sex provision for women in prison, then all females in this country are left vulnerable. Since my previous amendment, I have received a great many letters from both men and women. An amendment to secure the rights of women in prison to single-sex spaces has wide support across a cross-section of the general public. Media coverage continually indicates that the general public supports single-sex spaces for women and girls. Most recently, the article last week in the Times by, Jackie, by my, my, noble fr my honourable friend, uh, Jackie Doyle Price MP, called for women's prisons to become single sex once more. Quite rightly, people see this as an important issue in its own right, but they recognise that it is representative of the wider issue. This amendment matters not just to women in prison, but for all women and girls. The strength of evidence indicates that male and female prisoners should be housed separately this is normal international practice, including our own prison rules. Now, when the policies that permit some trans women prisoners, who are, of course, are of the male sex, to be housed alongside women in the female estate were put in place, this was essentially a live experiment a few years ago. It was not grounded in data. No data demonstrated that the acceptability or the impact on women in prison and on the operation of the female estate. In fact, research recently conducted on behalf of the Scottish Prison Service demonstrates that female offenders are negatively impacted when they are housed with trans women prisoners. This is notwithstanding the MOJ assertion that operational staff perceive that the policies are working well. Now, I am very pleased that the Ministry of Justice has committed to exploring opportunities for research in this area. It was also clear, my Lords, from the teaching and that the MOJ believes that the ability to act differently to the current policies is constrained by current legislation. I shall not argue on this point, but if real change is to be effected, then legislative change is or may be necessary. Now, the purpose of the Gender Recognition Act was to legally recognise the acquired gender of transsexual people in specific sets of circumstances in line with a judgment of the European Court of Human Rights. The GRA contains within it supplementary provisions in sections 23 and 24, which empower the Secretary of State to modify the effect of a gender recognition certificate by order. As the explanatory notes to the GRA acknowledge the possibility that, at the time of passing of the GRA, there were circumstances where its unintended consequences for people might not have been then realised. I suggest, my lords, that the allocation of trans women prisoners with a GRC to the female estate is one such situation, and that legislation to exclude these prisoners from the female prison estate on the basis of their sex, not their gender reassignment, is both possible and warranted. The intention of the GRA was not to render the provisions of separate, uh, separate sex and single sex services for females an impossibility to replace sex with gender or to deny the sex differences between men and women. 
Neither was the inclusion of gender reassignment protection as a separate protected characteristic in the Equality Act of 2010. The undesirability of that uh, should be self-evident, my lords. Now, a variety of concerns in respect of the previous amendment were raised by noble lords at, and at the teaching we had. These related to the vulnerability of trans women and their safety, the ability of trans women to live in their acquired gender, and the undesirability of housing trans women prisoners far from their families. My Lords, no one wishes to place any prisoner at an acceptable risk of harm. Vulnerability exists through the male estate, and although female offenders characteristically exhibit particular vulnerabilities, this does not exclude the possibility that the vulnerability of some male prisoners, including trans women, may be equally high. The question for all of us is how to keep trans women safe, and that's very important. However, that is wholly separate to the question, who has the legitimate entitlement to be housed in the female estate? I accept, my lords, that for some trans women, allocation to the male estate will not be appropriate and should not happen. My revised amendment means that Her Majesty's Prison Service will be able to assess trans women on a case-by-case -case basis and make decisions concerning allocation in consideration of all known risks. The wishes of the individual prisoner can be considered at the, as in the present policy concerning transgender prisoners. Where a prisoner cannot be housed safely in either the general population of the male estate or with other males on a vulnerable prisoner's unit, the decision can be made to house that prisoner in a specialist transgender unit. This will ensure their safety from male prisoners. There will be no access to or association with female prisoners. That would not be possible. But access to women in prison is not needed to keep these prisoners safe. It's removing them from the presence of men that is required to keep them safe, not putting them in a woman's prison. Now, I note that the MOJ states that 94% of trans women are housed on the male estate. This means that the safety of the overwhelming majority of trans women can be met in men's prisons. Now, again, at the teaching, the Ministry of Justice indicated that trans women may obtain a GRC whilst housed in the male estate. It would seem, my lords, that means that they're able to satisfy the requirement of living as a woman for a period of two years to the satisfaction of the Gender Recognition Panel. The overwhelming majority of trans women are housed in the male estate, meaning that their needs of women and their rights to live in their acquired agenda can be met in men's prison. Certainly, specialist transgender units for women, which I advocate, should be run according to the female regime and providing the canteen for female prisons. A concern was also raised that dedicated transgender units would leave trans women far from their families. Now, this is not an issue that only affects trans women. A 2016 HM, uh, Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Prisons report found that distance from family was a common barrier to visits throughout the prison estate. Women are particularly affected. There are around 10 times the number of men's prisons in England and Wales than women's prisons, and female offenders are more likely to be held at a distance from their families than men. A, two, a 2019 report stated that women are typically held at distances that are over 20% further away from their families than men. Some women are held at considerable distances from their families. As there is no female prison in Wales, women may be held over 150 miles from home. Prisoner allocation to specialist units may take place even though this results in increased distance from family. Allocation of trans women to E-Wing at Downview is an example. Trans women prisoners who find themselves housed far away from family should be assisted. Financial help is already available from the Assisted Prison Visit Unit to facilitate visits from close relatives and partners of prisoners who are on low income. I propose expanding this provision for trans women who are held far from family. The number of trans women prisoners currently held in the female estate is very small, suggesting that the number who may be held on specialist trans un transgender units would also be very, very small. The additional financial costs would therefore be modest indeed. The transgender prison population is growing, my lords. Data released by the MOJ at the end of last year indicate a 20% increase in the population of transgender prisoners since 2019. Their needs in prison will become more pressing. 
The commitment to building new estate, as outlined in the prison's white paper, provides the opportunity to provide that gen transgender prisoners are properly uh, 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 and appropriately accommodated. New secure, secure units can be tailored to their needs and vulnerabilities. These needs and the operation of specialist transgender units should be a focal point for the so-called future regime design with outcome frameworks uh, to reflect this. As part of the trauma-responsive approach to women's custody and the female offender strategy, we must recommit to keeping women's prisons single sex. My Lords, I conclude with a quote from page 54 of the new Prisons White Paper. It says, quote, We know that women in prison need to address their trauma and its effects if they are to engage with rehabilitative services to turn their lives around, unquote. My Lords, I submit that the possibility for rehabilitation of female offenders should not be compromised. My Lords, it does not turn their lives around if, as was acknowledged in the judgment of, of FDJ versus SSJ, these women are living in a state of fear and anxiety. My amendment ensures that the needs for privacy, dignity and safety of all prisoners can be met. I commend my amendment to the House.